Hello, everybody. We are here at the iPharma's 30th World Conference, Food for the Future. I'm Christian Muller. I'm moderating a roundtable on food chain transparency, a question of governance. And to get this topic started, uh, the role of organizing transparency in food chains um, and where we would argue, is that a question of technology now actually in a question of governance? Uh, continuing discussions we already had online with Foodlog and the iPharma forum online. We're starting this with an introduction of the scenery. We're starting with um, Anselm Ellis, managing partner of the AFC Consulting Group. Anselm, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, hello Christian, nice to meet you again and thanks very much for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to join you in that quite interesting forum. Yeah, well thank you. We've been working for quite some time and we know each other for quite some time and um, your expertise in uh, consulting um, the food industry from retail manufacturers um, when it comes to risk management, when it comes to supply chain transparency solutions, I thought it would be great to set a scene also for the other discussants on the panel uh, to give an idea to the audience, um, which are like researchers, which are uh, business people in the agribusiness and food sector on a global scale. What is sort of the state of the industry when it comes to transparency, supply chain, organization, and IT. But before we go there, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, what is sort of your background to bring you here? I think some people just want to get to know you a bit more. Yes, uh, perhaps I may start with um, where I grew up. I was born abroad, not in Germany. I grew up in Europe and Africa and Latin America. So there already I had a good feeling for different cultures and mentalities. And then I studied uh, agricultural economics uh, in Belgium and Germany and afterwards went to the Netherlands to develop an integrated pig production project with uh, the University of Wageningen. And therefore the first time I was confronted in a sort with transparency and data processing and data collection. And this approach has, let's say, been always in my mind during my 30 years of consultancy work, which I, uh, yes, was enabled to implement in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and Eastern Europe. So in quite different cultures and quite different mentalities, but always having the gain or the, the objective that all partners have to know something about their left or right partner and to have, a, let's say, a transparent system which uh, could be available at any time, at any stage for everyone that is connected. And this, in a sort, is what guided me in my consulting work. So that means you've already tried over a period in a span of uh, almost two decades now this, this approach. Um, and often when it comes to transformational change, it's technology as one com important component that gives then another jump, another big step forward. Do you think we are at a stage that technology now is not anymore a barrier to do the next step for more transparency? If you had this technology uh, like 10, 15 years ago, we have today, would, have, would that have been a difference? I think uh, there are only barriers, Christian, if uh, we are not speaking the same language. Uh, and if we are not uh, thinking about the same sorts of governance, of transparency, of user uh, possibilities uh, to be connected. Nowadays, we have completely different stakeholders that are forcing us to become transparent. In former times, these were the business operators. They wanted to get data uh, along the food value chain. And the retailer at the end of the day was uh, the, the one that was the interface to the consumer. But it never worked because the consumer couldn't get the data from the retailer because the retailer themselves 
who are not enabled to cover the whole value chain. Today, we have a completely different approach because the consumers are not only looking for the transparent data, they are asking for them. They are really becoming more and more, more intensive in that direction, and they are supported by non-governmental organizations that as well want to cope with the intransparency in the food chain. And the last player in this game is becoming more and more important. These are the governmental bodies that are looking for compliance because in a sort, we, in some of the food chains, we are confronted with nasty aspects as, for example, food fraud. And there, compliance is becoming more and more important and ownership of data is very important too because you can only share data so that everyone can uh, distribute, contribute and use. And this is an aspect that is becoming more and more complex if the technology is not demand driven, but owner driven. And therefore we as a consultant always Yes, uh, we, we propose to have open uh, open access uh, to these systems and not to have only one gatekeeper who is the owner of the data. But that often we have. I mean, we have now IT technology companies, be it small startups, be it uh, Silicon Valley big guys that are offering now new solutions, portals. They say we set up a platform economy on which you can then share. Just uh, plug and play with your own data and start sharing. We provide the infrastructure, you just go. Isn't that an approach? Technology is not is there. I think that we will need them to have a, comp uh, a consistent development in technologies, but as usual in life there is but. Uh, and we are restarting with the question of governments. If we have an open source system, if we have an open use system, then I'm very uh, uh, optimistic to have these technologies implemented uh, along the uh, food value chain. But if there is only one participant that can use the data, that is, uh, let's say, processing the data, that is offering the data, then we have a sort of a monopoly and in whatever markets, I do not trust monopolies. I really want to have access for everyone that is connected to use its data, to exchange information with the different partners and to have full access to what his data will become in a sort of data processing process. So then when you recommend, and we will have speakers and you will be introduced to them, coming from the control body side, coming from the retail side, um, to those global companies that have a need to control their own data, there's a competitive element. And whenever you speak to them, they would say, well, I don't want to share my data. I need to have full control. Now, how? what sort of recommendation would you give them to search out for who should be like an honest broker? What are these sort of the qualification for, for, for putting the eggs into which basket? Or into many, maybe? No. I mean, it, it, it has to do with ownership. Um, in former times, we were speaking about bottlenecks. Bottlenecks in uh, production, bottlenecks in uh, collecting harvest or uh, selling products. Nowadays, the bottleneck more or less is the data. Uh, because uh, data is very important. So I think uh, if we are speaking about honest brokers, we have always to cope with the position and the um, rules of broker uh, uh, brokerage, because um, being an honest broker means not to be um, blind and to accept everything that is offered by the partners uh, in the system. So the honest broker has to, uh, let's say, rely on a sort of governance where um, the system is ruled by um, transparency and as well by a system that is self-implemented and not only given by, let's say, a technological partner that is lending the platform 
but the use of the platform remains with the technologies. This is, doesn't work. So more like a service driven, yes, but the governance, the ownership of the rules, setting the rules, how to deal with the data, how to value data, yeah, how to make access rights, etc. That needs to be under the governance of the users, yeah, very transparent and involve governments as well. Yeah, yes, I think so. And um, we discussed it uh, several times with different partners um, to have a sort of an arena where everyone is invited to contribute and uh, to be in a sort of visitor or actor. But the ones that are only visiting or hearing what is happening there have different rules and diff different access to the data and to the maintenance of the system than the ones that are really operators. And we always suggest our clients to have clear rules how to participate, how to communicate, how to decide on what will become out of the data or out of the the flow of information and who can participate. And therefore, I am not always convinced that we are only speaking about the honest broker. I think we are speaking more or less about a gatekeeper, but this gatekeeper is not a monopoly. The gatekeeper should, uh, should be user-driven, demand-driven, and in a sort uh, governed by rules that we have defined in a common sense. In the end, yes, that is an international food and agribusiness management topic, right? So researchers are listening here, and I think we there are some groups that work on club theory of uh, of products and and rules. So um, we are setting within iPharma also research topics. So I think we have these evolving groups. Do you have already some in mind, or you think we are very early? that uh, these type of formations are building in different sectors? Or should we aim at a sort of overall food industry type of approach? How should that evolve? It depends on who is asking for information. If you see the consumer, the consumer wants to see everything. They want to see from the farm to the fork what has happened. They want to see the mini fundista in Colombia in the same way as in Ghana, the ones that are collecting the coconuts or whatever. This not, is not always feasible. So we have in a sort to define a, a, a sort of intermediary that could um, process the data, make the data more transparent, offer the data, but to a fair price and in a fair system. And therefore, in former times, the retailer was one to deal with the consumer or fair trade or other programs or projects mm -hmm. to do it. But nowadays, our um, uh, food chains are becoming more and more complex. We are losing some um, some parts of the um, food chain, the more we are dealing with fresh products. And therefore, the one that is influencing the food chain is not always authorized to be the owner of the last data point. And therefore, we think that we should have the most open-minded approach to attract the people, to define the roles once again, and to have a governance that is a democratic governance and not only a governance when, when I pay, I get what I get. I think that is a very good recipe. And let's uh, drive and put this question to the other uh, speakers, to the other attendees of this round table. Thank you very much, uh, Anselm. Anselm Alice, uh, managing partner of the AFC Consulting Group based in Bonn. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. I'm interested to see what they would mean. Thank you. Bye-bye, Christian. Hello again. Uh, I'm Christian Moller. I'm CEO of Global Gap. And uh, today we have Sabir Nazir. He is the CEO, I may say, yes, from Swapno Retail. Um, you'll explain in a minute uh, what you all are about. Uh, Sabir, hello to have you with us. Hi, hi, Christian. Uh, thanks for inviting. I'm honored. 
And today, this is uh, a part of a roundtable discussion. We pre-record this session of the IFARMA 2020 Goals Digital, like a virtual roundtable discussion. The topic is really a topic I've been working with and been puzzled about for quite some time. And that is, we have all these new technologies. And I know, um, Sabir, you are also involved in data and technology. Uh, for food chain transparency, and uh, we've worked uh, with you on those. But is it where? Why isn't it really translating into a mainstream? And uh, some of the people before have said, or experts, it's a kind of a governance question. Let's explore that a little bit more. But before go, we go there. Um, Sabia, maybe you explain a little bit about or who you are, what brought you there, and uh, Swapno, what is it? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is Sabrina Nasir. Uh, I work for different multinational companies uh, uh, in my career. And at present, I'm looking after the largest uh, retail chain, supermarket chain in Bangladesh, and which, which holds 45% uh, market share in this market. The market is pretty, pretty, I would say, is growing pretty fast. It's like the CAGR is almost more than 20%. So it's an emerging market, no doubt about it. Uh, my background includes uh, my education in engineering, technology, uh, and of course business. And uh, I got alumni status from four universities, uh, which includes uh, MIT Sloan School of Management and UC Berkeley has School of Management. So yeah, I'm a data guy. I'm very much into data science and data-driven decision-making process. So that's my background and how I say about uh, the issue you raised. Well, uh, of course, uh, governance is a big component of ensuring uh, transparency in the food chain. But I also believe, especially during this COVID-19, uh, uh, you know, or post-COVID situation, the new normal includes questioning the fundamentals, uh, questioning the basic. And that includes a lot of questions, like with all this development and civilization in place, why we don't have so many, uh, you know, ICU bed, and why the air is not fresh, and why our immunity is not that great. And there, sustainability, safety, transparency, becomes more important than ever. And there comes uh, an, 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 a growing awareness among the millennials and gen Generation Z and everybody. And I think uh, as a retailer, we think that this is uh, also our, our, our role to play. And uh, I think uh, we know how, what, what we should do and we have to address it together. You mentioned the millennials, you mentioned these um, uh, digital natives that are now taking or moving into the uh, purchasing power for consumers. Uh, and also uh, in a further previous discussion, you mentioned that um, the online uh, business has really grown in this time. All of this has to do with tremendous data and transparency. You see there is a difference in the need now from the new customers, the new consumers? Of course. Uh, we did a lot of uh, research uh, during this time. Um, I would say the, even uh, before COVID hit this, this part of this world, uh, people became very much aware of uh, social distancing, uh, use of sanitizers and all safety measures. And we were the pioneers, so people uh, became more addicted to Shopno's uh, mantra of uh, providing safe food and uh, ensuring transparency in the chain. So uh, coming back to your question, uh, yes, um, uh, we think that um, during this time, um, this is actually more than uh, more than just an essential part, you know, and. Uh, Omni channel is really, really doing well. So digitally, um, this according to our survey, the consumers are now 
more concerned about what's going inside the chain. They want to know. And they want to give premium to the brands who can ensure that. Uh, though the demand, aggregated demand has shrunk and many people lost their jobs, that's true, that's one side. Price sensitivity has gone up, that's one, one part of the story. The other part of the story is, uh, as, as you say, the digital natives, they want to know more. They want access to information. And the brands, the chain, the the cooperatives who can provide that, they will win. That's my belief system. And they will pay, pay more for, for that. Yeah, and we've been in your stores and we've seen that uh, you've provided transparency with farmer faces on uh, meeting harvest intervals of the use of crop protection products. So very innovative in that market. Well, you have that uh, market share growing as the sort of national retail, as the classical retail shop. That is what you do internally with your data. But uh, how much do you depend also in an emerging market uh, like Bangladesh on other sources of data, on transparency or interoperability with different data platforms? Yeah, it's a very good question. I mean, um, see, I mean, we never consider Shopno as just a retail store. We never consider that that is a brick and mortar store. We definitely have omnichannel retail, which includes our e-commerce. But we think uh, from the seed to the fork is all our responsibility. And we got to know everything. And we got to tell everything. If we cannot know everything, we cannot tell everything. Our consumers want us to know that and tell them that. So that transparency and traceability is important. That includes what, what is going inside the soil, what, what packaging material you're using, what damage you are making to the environment is, is important, that matters. And what kind of water you're using, that, that matters. Doesn't matter you stay in emerging market or you stay in the Western world. The gap, the distance between the worlds are shrinking, my friend. And that that's, is that's what we see, yes. And particularly when we are all subject to the same global pandemic, the same virus, we see how much we depend on each other, how much we need to collaborate. So yeah. there should there's enough pressure now to even interoperable more with databases, with, with data and sharing. What do you think prevents many people to share more data? Because you can't on your store presumably have all the products produced in your own even large network of, of companies which you belong to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first is fear. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, one is privacy, data privacy. People don't want to share data because they think probably some confidential a uh, classified information might go somewhere. Uh, they're scared of that. Uh, the government has to ensure that this data will not be used otherwise. Uh, and there should be a collaborative approach between public sector and private sector. Uh, that it's not like a data for taking action, rather it's a data for improvement. And mm -hmm. it's a collaboration and it's not like a zero one game it's not like that there are points between zero to one so there are steps and phases in in this improvement curve so if we follow that then data is the only thing which you need if you if you don't know anything you cannot improve right the way they say that you cannot manage if you don't measure so i think i think the fear has to go away and data privacy, uh, data privacy, and you know protection of individuals concern uh, has to be ensured in a platform. So the design of platform has to be such that the policies uh, of especially privacy uh, uh, should should be addressed, and the governance and its principles should be embracing, not should be controlling. You know, it should be more like facilitating. Uh, something like that. 
So which, which role you mentioned governments, they should have a certain role to assure. What other role would the government play? I mean, some of them want for their food safety policies have access. They want to enforce legislation using some of the private data. So what role and how should we involve with governments? I think uh, the way we can do is, first of all, in Bangladesh context, uh, setting up proper accredited labs or access to accredited labs mm -hmm. of Western markets is very important. That's one. Mm -hmm. I always am a big uh, supporter of Global Gap. You know that. Probably uh, uh, we are the first uh, pioneer in, in this region who, who shook hands yes. with mm -hmm. and, uh, in different conferences also, I mentioned to government agencies that why we cannot take the global best practices, why we have to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to, because if somebody already discovered and invented something, let's just follow that. So I would say use of science and technology and scientific mindset to improve the situation from A to B and then B to C. That philosophy has to be there. And the government has to think that the private sector, the private sector, there are some, uh, some, some players who are really for people, for improvement. Uh, they are benevolent partners. And of course, there should be, there could be some who are not really following the norms and you can treat them differently. So there should be stratas of actions, right? I mean, you cannot apply all in, you cannot put everything in one basket and you know label them together rather you should classify and then you should have different actions for different different uh, you know different groups so i think uh, that's that should be there and more of awareness uh, should be here and a private company cannot generate that kind of awareness you know frankly speaking uh, because the government has that kind of budget the donor agencies have that kind of budget so uh, making people aware, especially in this part of the world, I think government can play a big role. And then the consumers will create that pressure on the brands, on the value chain. And on, even on that type of pressure and scenario, Schwabner would share data if that's guaranteed that this has been safe and used the right way, correct? I mean, you have a lot of data that absolutely. is... Absolutely. As a market leader, everyone would be more yeah. interested to see more, but you need to have the control of the insight. We are open book, Christian, always. We are open book to our consumers, to our shareholders, to the government, whenever, whoever wants to see that, we are just open book. But of course we got suppliers and I cannot tell that all the suppliers will share the data, but mm -hmm. encourage them we can we can make them convinced we can try our level best to the last age because it's our own world it's a one world and it's all our children who need to be saved who need to live a better life and this covid i i think is is an eye op opener where we know we, we we think we need to have fresh air and we need to have renewable energy we need to have safe food and this is how we, we, we can be saved. So it's a collaborative thing. What a nice closing. Sabir Nazir, CEO of Swagno in Bangladesh. Thank you very much for this round table discussion and this input. And uh, I'm looking forward to continue more with you with that part of the world. What I see again, and uh, it's always a reconfirmation Yes, the gap between the different worlds is closing down. We have new technology available everywhere. Now we also have the same and similar mindsets. With all of this, it should be possible to set a rule in that collaboration to make this a real better place. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, as always. Thank you. Pleasure. You are here at the iPharma 2020 Goes Digital Virtual Roundtable Discussion. I'm Christian Moller. I'm the CEO of Global Gap. And with me today is Johan Maris, Director of Control Union. Hello, Johan. Good morning, Christian. Nice to meet you. Yes, Johan, we are talking, want to talk about food chain transparency, a question of governance. And um, within this framework, 
Um, before we start about this question, we have so the technical platforms, we have, um, uh, in, in fact, everything is a prerequisite for full chain transparency. But what we observe is that there isn't that big mainstream uptake. And um, I'd like to analyze with you, being in the core of trust in supply chains, what is your insight? But before that, maybe you talk a little bit about yourself and about Control Union. Okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Johan Ares. I'm a director of Control Union. Uh, I'm an agronomist. I'm in uh, this field between policymakers and, uh, and so let's say, the uh, daily practice of agricultural. I'm already working for 30 years. Uh, Peterson Control Union is a Dutch family-owned company and as we speak this week, we would have celebrated our 100 years anniversary. We have to delay it for one year, uh, but still 100 years, of course. Congratulations. That's a long time. It is. So considering this 100 years, of which uh, part you have joined as well, what is the biggest pain point in supply chains, which uh, transparency shall address? Yes. Well, it, by preparing myself on this uh, discussions, this interview, uh, uh, brainstorm session, I saw the word accountable quite often. And I think finally it all goes down to uh, uh, resp uh, uh, taking responsibility. So if, if people, uh, a lot of uh, actors in the supply chain, they are willing to take their responsibility. Uh, and uh, uh, whereby trust in each other that you can share uh, mistakes because mistakes are made in the supply chain and have to be repaired. That's clear. Uh, and, and where needed, immediately action should be taken. But therefore, you need a lot of trust. Uh, uh, and so we should start with uh, uh, respecting each other uh, 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 responsibility. Uh, and whereby we push that people take the responsibility. I think there uh, uh, the, the, uh, a lot can be made. And you, as a, as a global organization, um, working with sustain, with the certification um, in food safety, sustainability, and other areas, other compliance, um, Corona has brought also a big issue now to build trust. Usually, you had humans that work on a site and doesn't do an audit and then report about it. How has it been affected uh, for you today? Well, Corona was a, and is a big issue, of course, and, and unfortunately, the forecast doesn't look uh, good. Uh, uh, I would say it had uh, for sure a negative impact, but also a positive impact. The negative impact was, of course, that we were uh, confronted with backlogs from one day to the other day. We had travel restrictions, uh, which, of course, uh, led to some backlogs. However, we also learned a lot that we can do a lot with data uh, from a distance. We are testing with HoloLens and remote audits. Luckily, we have a huge network of people locally in the country itself where traveling was possible. Where, uh, and in many cases, we flew over people just for uh, two or three audits, which didn't feel also sustainable. So I think that all in all, Overall, it's, it is positive uh, uh, effect. We, we had to change our way of working. Uh, and of course, we hope back uh, to travel again. That's clear. Yes, and when you look about trust, usually an auditor goes on a site, looks behind the scene, gets critical information to be seen, business critical information, not necessarily for the customer, not necessarily for a competitor. Now, going on remote, that data has to be shared beforehand in an electronic form. So have you built an infrastructure that allows for that trust and transparency with your clients? Yes, of, uh, of, uh, we were already investing quite heavily in that. Uh, of course, data protection is one of the biggest issues. Uh, 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 we also call it hybrid audits. So some things we keep on locations whereby we have a local person involved and uh, 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 remotely we have our experts sitting, helping from a distance. But data protection is very, uh, very, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, it's, it's a hot topic. And uh, as an example, we also hire our ethical hackers ourselves to make sure our systems are up to date as far you can be up to date. Uh, uh, but but we, we challenge ourselves. And when it comes then to sharing that data, you have now that confidential data, your clients trust you, but you are one of many certification auditing bodies. I mean, as an example, Global Gap, we have for our farm audits 165 certification bodies 
not all of them as the size of control union with the business with us, but anyway, a lot of different audit data and a lot of different customers, and they want to share data. What's the biggest sensitivity here? The biggest sensitivity, I think, is that we should all realize that the data, the owner of the data is finally the one who uh, under, uh, uh, had, to, had to audit himself. So it's the farmer or the processor who uh, uh, who owns the data. That's our philosophy. So as long uh, the, the farmer or the processor has yeah. access to the data and can decide on who can see it or not, and then it's up to the ones who cannot see it to decide, uh, I don't want to do business with you or, or, or not. But uh, finally, the, the one uh, who who, uh, who owns the data should be also to decide on the data. We will never share data with others without asking for permission by, uh, by the farmer or processor beforehand. Right. But that still means that if I'm a buyer and we will within this round table discuss about buyers, they have access uh, or will have to have access to different data sources and they would like to have a one-stop shop. We are all talking also about efficiencies and systems mm -hmm. and, and you may have in the hundreds different uh, parties that want to have access to this data and um, how should we arrange this? I mean, is there anything else we could do? Technology-wise, we could have APIs, interfaces to share the data, but how can we travel with the data, that level of uh, trust or confidentiality? Yes. Well, I think all comes down to a, a, a right setup of the governance structure. Uh, finally, of course, data uh, could be like a, a gold mine. Uh, if, you, if you have a lot of data, you, you probably can forecast uh, uh, business or prices, etc. And uh, I think it's in everybody's interest to foreclose that, that that is happening uh, because the data where, where, where we are talking about is traceability and uh, knowing where it's coming from, knowing it's, it's compliance with, uh, with uh, food safety or any other standards. Uh, 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 but we should avoid, of course, that it is also used for forecasting prices or whatever. So having a good governance structure whereby we can forecome and uh, and those who put in their data can trust on it that it will only be used for the purpose where it is used for where it should be used for and and there should be check and balances for that as well of course i think that that that's the most important thing what 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 you now see in 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 the traceability systems they are all related to a very small supply chain whereby people already know each other or they are related to one product uh, 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 which, of course, is not the purpose. Finally, we want to have uh, a farmer who can put all his data, all his products in one platform, uh, wherever it ends. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, we are not there yet. And then we have another stakeholder, governments, the public sector. I know like in the Netherlands, but elsewhere as well. They want to have access to have a risk-based approach to food safety, later it's environmental metrics to support their policy measures. Is that a, that's a different player as well? Yes, that's a different player. Of course, in, in uh, a government has more, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 regulations around himself to, to ask for uh, data when needed, when there is an issue or whatever. But let's say in a normal supply chain where, uh, where people just want to be uh, uh, transparent, uh, including the government, they want to focus their uh, resources on those who need, the, who need extra attention, let's say it like that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I get, the governments are differently. Uh, uh, the, the basis of certification is, of course, voluntary. Uh, I take my responsibility, uh, uh, and we, uh, I think, we as a business always have to protect that, that 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 philosophy is behind it. I want to show, I want to positive discrimination instead of negative discrimination. We look for compliance. If there's a non-compliance, you have to repair it, and of course, if there is an action needed, immediately action needed. Uh, um, uh, but governments are big stakeholders, and if they bring it positive, if, if let's say, uh, of course, they have also their checks. Uh, if, if transparency could lead to less checks because they trust the system, and therefore we have to build, I think could be could work in everybody's benefit. So you mentioned that uh, it shouldn't be a gold mine. The data platforms, transparency, traceability platforms should not be a business itself so that they can use it as a mining gold 
uh, for doing their own business. What we also say is that we want that the owner of the data can actually make money if it's the producer of the data. So if a farmer shares data, there's a value to the data, be it in more information, but also you might be finding somebody that wants to pay for the data because they want to do some, uh, some forecast with it. And that means the farmer can benefit the smaller farmers in those places. So, well, thank you. You are in a very critical part of the supply chain. You supply, you produce a lot of trusted data, but yet you say we do not have a, a platform that allows for that honest brokerage of data, that it is not a business model itself, that go across competition, that goes across the supply chain without having uh, to risk that by sharing you become more vulnerable rather than you become more trusted that's yeah. what we want yes. yes thank you very much uh, Johan Maris uh, director of control union for being with us today let's discuss with the buyers what they are willing to give willing to share to build a governance structure that brings the efficiency which is needed that overcomes these barriers to harmonization barriers for a whole industry to deliver in the end a promise to global consumers as consumers, but also as citizens when it comes to environmental and social standards. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.